My name is Tony Bellew and I get my smile with condensing. How's he, how's he get, how did Spencer Fearon get on at Sky? Uh, I think that we'll do that one later. We know how he got a job at Sky. Ed Robinson, I've mentioned this before, Ed Robinson got his nose broke in a fight in Doncaster after Adam Smith got slapped. So Ed Robinson's part well in at Sky. Spencer Fearon knows this, so we piled Ed Robinson up and they got Spencer Fearon a job, didn't they? 16 hours a week at Sky. So, you can't kick a man when he's down. Spencer's a failed boxer, failed trainer, failed promoter and manager, so media is next, it's last, last leg for him, isn't it? So, he's, he's used his influence to get a job at Sky 16 hours and, you know, he promotes himself, he's like a little promoter, isn't he? There's nothing wrong with that. You've got to give him credit because to say he's failed at everything, he's blagged it at Sky, isn't he? But, he looks like he's put his foot in it, doesn't he? With the comments about Oscar Rivers, he's upset people, so what will be will be. Looks like he's on his way out. So Right. Clash in the Dunes. Oh, well he's oh Spencer Fear and sorry. Somebody mentioned to me about Spencer Fear and going on about the Clash in the Dunes and bigging it up and bigging Campbell up and Lomachenko, that's a good fight that isn't it, Lomachenko, Campbell, and it's a good undercard, so props to Eddie Earn for that. But getting back to this clash, clash in the dunes or something, what is all that about? Sand dunes does that mean? I mean, that's probably the worst ever title ever, I mean, it could have been dust upon the dunes, couldn't it? Or, I mean, that's just off the top of my head, do you know, do you know what I mean? Or, or uh, shake up in Saudi. Do you know what I mean? But, I don't know, or redemption. Could have been that, couldn't it? Redemption in Sa Saudi, or... I don't know, but... The way I look at it is this. Joshua against Ruiz, he's just hyping it at the moment. If it happens in Saudi, I'd be surprised, but gutted deep down, because all them fans that have been told that Anthony Joshua was a true Brit, and he's flying the flag. It's a bit like Tyson Fury, isn't it, really? He was going over to America to take it by storm. He was going to shake it up. And he got dropped by Wilder twice. He fought Tom Swartz and he's fighting Otto Wallen. That's it, shaking up America. What you've got is fighters earning millions of pounds and they're not bothered about anything in between because money makes people do crazy things. If you don't believe me, speak to Dennis, multi-millionaire. People act differently around him when they find out who he is when I'm in his company. Do you know what I mean? But Dennis has still got the same pals he went to school with. Some are on dolls, some have been in Nick, some are quite damaged and blah de blah. He can come and sit in, in, in my house and have a cuppa and chase around the room with my dog Rocky while my dog's barking and put 20 quid a piece in my kid's hands and sit there having crack with us all or he can go sit in, uh, in in business meetings in Dubai and close the deal can't he or whatever he, he's flexible isn't it? But, isn't it? but the point I'm trying to make is people will do crazy things around people with money it's all, I guess it's always been like that. Money rules the world, doesn't it? Fighters have to be paid. I haven't got a problem with that. But don't sit there and tell me that you're a true Brit and that you want to fly the flag for England and drive a Land Rover and a Jaguar and you've got an MBE and an OBE and you want to be knighted and then in next breath putting stuff out saying you want to be a billionaire and things like that and wearing 350,000 pound watches and 
Dubai tourism flying you over to their country on private jets and uh, don't in neck, don't come out with stuff like that saying you want to be a billionaire though and, and carrying off like that and then turning around saying it's business it's business and knocking back 50 million pound offers and and carrying off like that and in the next breath you're coming out with things like stay humble stay humble be humble be humble but yet you're carrying off like that but you want to be humble come on don't tickle me back or tickle me feet pricing out the fans we've covered that haven't we the pricing out the fans uh, did I mention it regarding Ruiz and Cash? Uh, like I said, Heyman won't roll over for Hearn. Hearn needs Ruiz, otherwise AJ will end up in an easy fight for a vacant belt. We saw it with the WBA and the IBO. Those belts were vacant when the Joshua Vladimir fight was made for the... IBF belt, the WBA and the IBO all of a sudden decided to jump in. Now at the time, if you remember, Eddie Hearn uh, had had Luis Ortiz. When Eddie Hearn signed Luis Ortiz, he was a WBA interim champion. Do you get that? I'll repeat that again for you, those of you who might not have heard it. Eddie Hearn had the WBA interim world champion. Above him was a WBA belt and a vacant WBA super belt as Tyson Fury vacated, retired or was stripped we don't know it's all shrouded in mystery it's whatever Tyson want, whatever yarn Tyson wants to spin at the time well that's true isn't it now the WBA at the time were probably waiting for the Vladimir Joshua fight. They didn't want that belt to go with Ortiz, did they? I mean, why didn't Eddie Hearn get Luis Ortiz upgraded to uh, one of them belts? He could have had the WBA regular upgrade and the regular champion who had the belt, he could have been upgraded to Super. Why didn't they do that? They did with Scott Quigg and he drew the fight. They did and he drew the fight and they held the belt up. Scott Quigg, do you remember? Go look down Scott Quigg's record, he drew a fight for WBA the day after being upgraded to champion and he drew and he held the belt up. <laughs> belt should have still been vacant. No, uh, but they'd upgraded him, and that's what happens. Point I'm trying to make is this right. It's a cash business. Vladimir against Joshua at Wembley is massive money. The WBA will want their three percent, won't they? That they're gonna want to get paid. Luis Ortiz doesn't sell a ticket and plus Eddie Hearn will have said we don't want to fight Luis Ortiz, he's an Olympian, he's a southpaw and he can punch so they didn't want to fight him. The other bad reports back of what he did to Dave Allen, Dave Allen will have said if he can punch and David will know if Dave Allen can take a punch right and he can give a punch. Dave Allen's been in with Joshua and he's been with Luis Ortiz and if you ask Dave he'll tell you Ortiz punches harder and more accurate. Joshua's probably a little bit faster but not as harder and not as accurate but the WBA came to the table and the IBO but this is what I see happening. If if these belts end up vacant and a few of them might end up vacant you know because there's going to be pressure put on by all different people and it's it's like a film and it's like it's like a scripts are being wrote all over the place everybody's got their own little agenda and what you're going to get here is you're going to get Ruiz they're going to want paying to fight Joshua because Joshua is not going to Mexico and they're not going to America so if they're going to Saudi this is the story we're being told now it could be anything it could be any. It could be. Pff, could be anywhere where the money is. I mean, they were talking Nigeria the other week. If Ruiz just said, "I don't want to fight altogether," and he wants to weigh them belts in, he might be able to keep one of them belts or two. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Eddie might be able to get a couple of belts back or one belt. It don't matter. But 
if if Louise drops all four belts and Joshua fights somebody for all them belts because if he drops all them belts technically they should all be split up and the number one and the number two should be fighting from all the way across the board but them governing bodies they're that greedy they'll let Joshua have them all just like when they threw the IBO and the WBA belt into the pot when he fought Vladimir them belts were vacant all of a sudden they're thrown into the pot why didn't the number one and number two WBA fight for the WBA and the number one and number two fight for the WBO no we're going to throw them in the pot aren't we and get the cut of the Wembley money with Vladimir Joshua that's what happens and point I'm trying to make is this if Joshua fights so he doesn't fight Ruiz if Joshua doesn't fight Ruiz next where are them belts going Joshua will probably fight for all them belts against I don't know a nobody or somebody he can beat easy like Trevor Bryan or something and then they go again only this time Joshua is not going to have the same effect as what he had when he was undefeated because not only was he frightened of fighting anybody when he won the belt, the IBF off Charlie Martin, they've, they've been cagey and they've, they've wrapped him in cotton wool. If Louise pulls out and Joshua fights for all them belts, he will be, I guarantee you, there'll be a certain lot, load of people want to watch Joshua in England. He could still sell out the O2, but he will never be the stadium superstar that he was. I don't think he will. And another thing as well, he'll always be known as the guy who who shouts about Ruiz dodging him when reality is they're trying to get Ruiz on the cheap, aren't they? They're trying to get Ruiz into a position where he fights Joshua in a country that they want him to fight in, probably wearing their gloves, their ref, their judges, and they're going to pay him, well, we we already know, don't we? They're paying him what is it? Twenty five percent to what he's getting. If Ruiz is getting twenty five percent of what Joshua's getting, that's like a mandatory slot, isn't it? So that means he's got to beat him twice. So that means that Dylan White were probably telling the truth, wasn't he? That if he beat Joshua, he's only going to get X amount. So you've got to beat Joshua twice, then, aren't you? The first time Joshua took a risk going to America, the second time he'll keep it long and stay hard at weighing up for a points win. Ruiz and Al Heyman know that, so let's just watch the parade go by. But if Ruiz drops them belts, Joshua needs him for credibility. But Eddie Earn has got that much brass neck and he's got that many people on YouTube like all these Matchroom FC gimps from Gimpville Island and he's got Mr Bean Bean, could have been, run have been, should have been, bait Bean, never been you know I'm watching you Bean well Bean will go spin a story won't he on his channel Sky so will Johnny Nelson, they'll wheel out Matthew Macklin, Spencer Fearon all the rest of them, they'll wheel, Tony Bell, you'll, they'll wheel them all out and they'll all spin loads of yarns that Ruiz bottled it. When in reality, the reality is this, Ruiz bashed him up the first time and they wanted to get him on cheap, so he gave the belts up and he went and fought Wilder. If Wilder beats Ruiz, Wilder could technically throw that WBC belt in the bin and they could get the Ring Magazine belt on the line, let me tell you, on the line. And do you know what they could do? Do you know what they could do? They could just have Wilder with Ring Magazine belt saying, listen, I beat everybody, I beat the man who beat the man who beat the man. The belts don't mean nothing. I've got the Ring Mag, I'm known as the man. Wilder will be known as the man if he beats Ruiz. And what will Joshua be known as? The guy who beat Ruiz and didn't rematch him because I'm telling you now something is going down down behind the scenes with all this and we're gonna see it unfold and I don't think that Joshua's that keen on fighting Ruiz I think he'd just be happy to get the belts back and just defend them against nobody's and, and mandatories and 
I mean, they're fighting twice a year. He could fight Pulef and Trevor Bryan. He could fight Pulef in December, Trevor Bryan next summer. Or Dillian White. He could do out, couldn't he? So, I'm, I'm getting a bit disinterested, to be honest, with boxing at the moment, but... Uh, I said it in June, and I say it now. Erm will have to go capping hand to... Al Heyman. Hearn don't want legal issues. Not after Steve Collins beat Barry Hearn in a high court. The Hearns are scarred. If you Google the Steve Collins Barry Hearn court battle, you will you will see that Barry Hearn lost in court against Steve Collins. And he had to pay him a I think it was seven figures, I'm not sure. It might tell you a lot of money, I think it might have been a million quid. But Barry Ayn had to pay Steve Collins. Barry Ayn had to pay Steve Collins and I know what happens with these court cases. Look at that one with Dennis and Eugene Maloney. Eh? Dennis and Eugene Maloney. That were over ten grand, Dennis ended up paying one fifty. So if you want to mess about with courts, tr trust me, I'm telling you now, you can get your fingers burned. Now, how will Dazone and Sky feel about Eddie putting biggest fight of the year on a different time zone for the second time this year? Uh, I don't think Dazone will be very pleased if this fight in Saudi happens. That's why... I think it could be smoke and mirrors. Now, I think they're just trying to test Ruiz and see how much they want. Now, it's a game of chess now, isn't it? It ain't going to be made overnight. We're only 10 week, ten week and 2 days after the fight. 72 days on and Eddie's having a press conference already and Ruiz, by the sounds of it, isn't there. So... Look at Love Arts here off Stig. God, Stig's on a one-man crusade to get his girlfriend, his new girlfriend, who looks to me like she's she's a nice lass, nice looking girl with a nice figure. He's hoping to get a, to get superstardom for her, but I don't think putting pictures of your girlfriend in her underwear, and she's 50 odd year old, all of her social media is good with somebody that you've just met, but I don't think Stig, Stig's going to listen to me, is he? He's the stig, isn't he? He does what he wants. But, uh... But it is what it is. But getting back to this, uh, I don't think Dazone will be too pleased, to be honest, uh, at all. But it is what it is, isn't it? Uh... I don't think, I don't think they'll be too pleased at all. Uh... AJ Scott, it's an awful location, how do fans get there? Well, how are fans going to get there to, to Saudi? Well, how the fans are going to get there? They're going to have to fly there on an aeroplane. And how many people really want to fly somewhere just to watch a boxing match? You, you think about it and you think, do you know what? It's December the 7th, it's 18 days before Christmas. Now, I know that Eddie Earns already been on social media saying it's a great... Christmas gift for somebody. Well, if it's a Christmas Christmas gift for for you, I mean you you must have an extravagant lifestyle because why would somebody want to send somebody to Saudi to watch a boxing match for a Christmas present? It's not something I'd want as a gift. I wouldn't. I, wouldn't, I think it'd be a waste of money. Even if I were a multimillionaire, it'd be a waste waste of money. Because uh, if I put one thing, one foot wrong in Saudi, I'd probably end up with my hand cut off or something. They don't mess about over there, do they? But a lot of people are going to think, well, we can't take us women out there, and it's all a bit taboo rules and all that. And I just see, look, no offence. I remember what Eddie Hearn said, right? When I see Valley were trying to get the Amir Khan fight, and. Uh, I made a car fight in Saudi. I remember Eddie Hearn knocking it back and swerving it. And, and now all of a sudden they want to go out there. 
it's probably the cost they've had the offer, isn't it, with the money, but I don't know, but I think it's dangerous for the fans. The fans can turn on Joshua. Yeah, they'll get the pay-per-view buys, but will they? Will they? Will they get the pay-per-view buys? 80,000 people, if they can't fly over. I, I estimate maybe 5,000 people flying out there. 5,000. So that leaves another eight, eight, 85,000 times 20 quid on pay-per-view now. I've heard a story today of somebody who was an ex-Satanta employee and he's friends with Dennis and he said, you bang on there Russ about the pay-per-view, they're putting it up now. If you remember a few months ago I said they're putting it up to £25. He said to me, he didn't hear it with £25 but he did hear that they are putting it up because Eddie's telling people that he thinks they can get two million buys for this fight. Now two million quid, if they put it up a fiver, that's ten million going in the pot. Well that'll pay Ruiz, won't it? And have a million spare. That's how Eddie works, but he said he didn't hear the exact amount. So the pay-per-view is going to go up. Not as many fans will travel. Is Joshua putting money over legacy? Yeah, I think he's put money over legacy. I think it's been, he's damaged, I think he's, commercially, I think he's more damaged than ever now, because he's, he's, he's being touted as, well, he, they're all putting it about that he's a greedy so-and-so, aren't they? Now, is AJ a bigger version of Frotch and just a gym rat? Yeah. He's the same style as Carl Frost, same style, and he's a gym rat. Yeah, both are gym rats, both very fit, very strong kids, good punchers, and uh, yeah. Why Saudi Arabia? Well, it's simple, money. If somebody from India rung Eddie Earn up and said they're going to top the offer, would Eddie Earn go to India? Of course he'd go to India. Of course he would. That's just how it is. He's got to get paid. If he thinks this is his last fight, he's going to want to get paid. Uh, was Terry Chapman Dharma and Ingram Jones right about Anthony Joshua's defence and his footwork four years ago when he won the title? Or it three years, three and a half years, whatever it was. Yeah, three, three and a half years ago. Was that was... Uh, was Ingram Jones of Bayloric TV, shout out Ingram Jones and Terry Chapandama at Highfield Boxing on Twitter. Were they right about Joshua's footwork and that? Yeah, but I was also saying that as well, but I didn't go into detail because Ingram's ex-fighter and I think he's done a bit of training, Terry's a trainer. I didn't go into detail, I just said, look, Joshua is hiding glass and they're matching him accordingly. And I've been saying it for years. And when he got beat, I'll be honest, I was like, yes, get in there, he's been beat. I was glad he got beat. So I thought that they were they were they were lying to fans. They kept putting him in the same bracket as Muhammad Ali. I mean he even copied Ali with the white silk dressing down and the white boots and that. I think he tried to model himself on Ali too much and well, it worked for him because he got an MBE and an OBE, but deep down, Ruiz stood up to him, and it's like Terry Chapadama said, where was the savage on the night? Joshua's supposed to be this savage guy. He's brutal and ruthless and ah, sticks his tongue out while he's knocking you out. He's a brutal, savage guy. He's like Ernie Shavers. He's like George Foreman. He's a bad man. And then we've got little chubby Andy Ruiz, a little chubby kid that knocked him about all over. He had arms as long as that. His arms as long from there to there. He's like he's like that. That was jobbing. He had short arms, and you know he had a, he had a belly like me, but yeah. He knocked Joshua about. He was knocking him all over the place. So I was glad it happened. I was glad it happened. I'll be honest, I was glad it happened. But now, I'm wanting him to come back and redeem himself and win the fans over. Now, 
If he'd have took a pay cut and he'd have come back to the UK, beat Ruiz and then fought guys like Wilder and Tyson Fury and Dylan White rematch and beat them guys and then rematch Tyson and Wilder and beat them again, he could be... He could have come back, Joshua, beat Ruiz, then beat Ruiz again, Tyson twice, Wilder twice, Ortiz twice, and White one more time. So he could have fought Ruiz two more times, Tyson two, Wilder two, White one more, and Ortiz one. He could have had eight fights, maybe one with Joe Joyce nine, Hergovic ten. Joshua could have 10 fights over the next 5 years to take him to 35 years old and then retired. In them 10 fights, he could have had something like half a million, half a billion. He could have had half a billion or be worth half a billion. In dollars, what's that half a billion pounds sterling? I don't know. I don't think he'd be a billionaire, but he could have, he could have, he could be 10 fights away from it. But you can't keep pulling the wool over the fans' eyes because you're going to have people like me who are going to sit and scream it from the rafters that we are not happy with this. We are not happy with that. That's what you're going to have. You're going to have people like me shouting this and that out. And don't forget, my channel, we're over 2,000 subscribers now, which isn't a lot technically, is it really? To say we've, we've been re really been going since end of November 2017. But we didn't really start doing channel proper, did we, till Christmas. But out of them subscribers that I've got, they tell people things and they tell people things. And that's how it spreads and it's called social media now. Joshua might be a great guy and all that. And these people around him might be great people. But their God is money. Everybody wants paying. Now, commercially... They knock back the 50 quid offer because the people around him were not going to be eating as much as Joshua if he got the 50 million. But like I've just said to you there, he could fight 10 or 12 fights. You could throw Yoka into the mix, couldn't you? Yoka two times. He could fight Ruiz two more times, Yoka two, Joyce two, Fury Wilder. That's 10 fights. Throw Dillian White and Ergovic in. You know, that's 12 fights there. Usek, two fights with him. That's 14 fights Joshua can be in. 14 fights. Then you've got Dubois to finish off. You could have two with him, 16. Look, you could easily, easily give Joshua 20 fights over the next 8, 9 years if you were busy. 20 fights over the next 10 year takes him to what? 40 year old. He's not going to fight that long. So he'd have to squeeze squeeze him into say 8 year. 3 times a year. 3 eights of 24. Could easily do that. Sometimes you could have 3 fights every 14 month. Squeeze it into, into 7 year 20 fights. He could be 37 and have another 20 fights and he could get out of boxing at... 43 and 1 or something like that. Like Riddick Bowie well, we was 43 and 1. He could easily do that, Joshua, and he could win everybody back and go down as an all-time great and we could all be proved wrong. George Foreman could end up showing him some very good technique, showing him how to punch harder and blah de blah. They could get I don't know, they could get some specialist in like Virgil Hunter to show him how to have a bit better defence and Blah de blah, they could do all that, and all them people that are around Joshua could keep getting paid for another 10 more years. Under Armour could grow, they could have Leon Skins, he could have his own security business off it all. Oh, I'm a bit deep here, but all them people have all got agendas who are around Anthony Joshua. Every single one of them has an agenda, and it's all resting on this Ruiz rematch, whether he's going to take the fight or not. There's a lot of people getting paid and this is a little bit more deep than what people think. But like I said, I've just named 20 easy fights, 20, no, 20 proper fights he could have there. I don't want to see Eddie Molinas and Brazils and people like that. I want to see all these top guys fighting, don't I? Uh, I mean, Eddie's got Gassiev now, hasn't he? I won't put it past him, putting him letting him fight, Gassi, putting Gassiev in with Joshua. It is what it is, isn't it? 
I mean, you've got to understand that AJ walked into a, J a gym years ago, right? He walked into a gym, McCracken ended up, ended up all of him, which is a Team GB team, and they've looked at him and they've said he's the new Frank Bruno, and they've moulded him. I mean, McCracken even went to court to get, you know, writing letters to courts and all that for him. They knew deep down they were going to be involved with him, and they knew he was going to go to Eddie Hearn. Because Eddie Hearn's got the pick up there at the EIS, and you can't fault Eddie for. For that, can you? He's going to manipulate the system, any if he can get away with it. So, but it's like Terry Chapman Dharma said: Joshua was rushed. He was rushed. A bit like Dave Allen. There's no shortcuts to success. I mean, Dave Allen, right? If it, when Dave Allen left here, right? Dave Allen left here. Dennis said to him, "Your job." is to train. He was getting £200 a week off Dennis, out Dennis's pocket, and he had a job. Stay fit. And what were we doing? He was coming here on a Friday to pick his wage up. Go and ask Michelle in that office. Pick his wage up in here and come in here with a belly out here. So Dennis got rid of him. 6-0 and on a draw. So, or 6-0 and or 7-0. and It might have been 6-0. I'm not sure if his last fight were with Steffi Bull at the Dome. Or if the one with Dennis in Sheffield or one in Newcastle, I'm not sure. It was 6 and 0 in a draw, 7 and 0. I want here then. But David wanted to fight all his Ortiz and be a journeyman. Um, and whereas De Dennis said that Dave Allen had talent and he wanted to go through the levels, he wanted to get him an area belt. Then an English, a British, a Commonwealth, a European, a world, he wanted to go through levels and find a level. But David ruined it before he got to that level and then he got a he got a bit of a taste of glory off at back of getting beat up by Lewis Ortiz. Go and look at the interview, Dave Allen, Lewis Ortiz, IFL. You've got Dave Allen coming into the dressing room, he stood next to Lewis Ortiz like he's a fanboy. And he said, You're a bad man and look what you've done to my tongue and it were cringe. Can you see Dillian White going into just you know, to Joshua after he knocked him out. Could you see that happening? You're not going to see it happening, are you? And Dave sort of is creating a bit of a following, hasn't he? So you can't knock that. I was one of them that said to you, you're going to get out, get yourself out on social media. But I didn't think you were going to be in bed all day on social media and not in gym, because that's basically what's happened, isn't it? Took all that punishment to head, boom, 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 boom. Your head's not designed to take punishment like that. And now, what's happened now? You're putting tweets out, any David, saying, well, we know what he said, don't we? I've not been well for 18 months and bad headaches and got glasses on and all that. It's not good, is it, doing that? Because what promoter's going to put him on a show now in an hard fight? Because if he gets killed or maimed, they're going to say, well, the signs were there, didn't you read his tweets? So he's dug himself in a hole now, hasn't he? By that. So it is what it is, isn't it? So, but he's not my problem now, but I wish him all the best. And uh, me and my family care for him. But, you know, it's one of them things, isn't it? Sometimes you can't reach people because they've got a head like concrete. But let me just say this to you. Any trainer out there or lifestyle coach who is advising Dave Allen to carry on fighting, Right? He's a crazy man. If he wants to carry on fighting, he needs to stick around Tom Little and Cash Alley. And forget headlining shows on Sky where you're just going to be a punch bag. That's gone now. Stick around that level and go get a job as a trainer after. And stay in boxing if you've got a lot to offer. If Spencer Fearing can get a job at media, I'm sure Dave Allen can. But oh, it is what it is, isn't it? All them daft things that he's doing on social media and things that you're doing, f that, that'll put people off on it, giving him a job at media, unpredictable. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, Michelle there just letting me know that we're finished at half four. She'd love a date with old Porky Michelle, wouldn't she? <laughs> but it is what it is, isn't it? So, right, I think we've done this one on. I've done that yesterday, the Dave Allen one. We wish Dave Allen well. Money over legacy, Joshua. We know about that, don't we? Money over legacy. 
plastics questionnaire for his girlfriend. You're not going to need that now because we're not going to be putting ring car girls on at 52 even if they have got a nice figure. But we wish her well. Stig should get her a modelling job or something if he loves her that much. Is Ruiz a favourite to win? Yeah, I'll make him the favourite. Money, everyone gets paid, yeah. Saudi Arabia, is it a cash out, Ross? Yeah, it's a cash out. Yui Fury versus AJ for all the belts. Do you see this happening, Ross? Uh, I do see it happening. If Tyson, if sorry, if if Joshua gets all the belts back, I see Yui Fury fighting Joshua. Yeah, I do, yeah. I can see it happening because what our Eddie will want to sell it is. If we beat Yui Tyson's gonna wanna come and defend his cousin's honour. That's how I see it happening. So uh Dave finds me. Dave Allen inserts for his videos. Saudi Billy Joe B sample gloves, right? So AJ interview, Spencer Fearon. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, we'll do all this on these videos and put, put them all out at once, shall we? I'll do it in a free part. Right, Saudi Arabia, do I think it will happen? I'm going to risk it and I'll put my neck on line and weigh it all up and I don't think it's going to happen at all. At all. If it does, brilliant, but come on no and we're talking four months away yeah aren't we we're four months away they've got another month before they can start selling this so no the next month is crucial but no it ain't gonna happen not in Saudi anyway uh, the B sample the B sample what can we say about the B sample where is this B sample what what what, what's happening with this B sample? I don't know. Did you know you can go from New York to Southampton and back on a boat in 10 days? Did you know that? Did you know that? In 10 days. Now, this B sample, well, it's been, it's been a month now, hasn't it? One month. It's been a month and we've not heard anything have we about this B sample now. Is it a month to Australia on a boat for six weeks or something? Back in the day, the 1933, right? Oh, right. oh, right. Douglas Jardine, the Borderline series. Was that in Australia or England? I don't know, I can't remember. It's that long ago. The point I'm trying to make is this, England used to go to Australia on the boat didn't they, over a period of time didn't they, to play tests back in the day, so it is what it is, so, and by the time they've got there, the bit that it, point I'm trying to make is if it takes five, six weeks to get to Australia on a boat, right, why? <laughs> Why is it taking this long for this B sample? It took Miller four days, didn't it? The glove situation. Well, Dillian White had the gloves on, didn't he? So they couldn't inspect what were in them. That's a bit of a shambles as well, isn't it? So, but I don't really know much about that. It's the drug thing I'm more bothered about. But the gloves is a problem as well, isn't it? The whole scenario had not been done correctly. I, I, I don't know. It looked to me like everybody just wanted to get this fight over and done with and get it over at line and get paid and to hell with everything else. I have a problem with Oscar Rivers not being told that he's getting in the ring with a guy who's potentially got drugs in his system. And not only that, they've got gloves that they weren't agreed on. These were a different set. So, I'm not pleased about that. Spencer Fear and coming out saying that Oscar Rivers have failed a drug test. I'm not happy with that. And Eddie Hearn even come out and said something as well, similar along them lines. So it's all not very good at all. But it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, 
it is what it is. So let's just have a look at this now. I think we're nearly done now. Let's have a look. Oh, right. Have a look. Right. So no problem. I can do that on way home. I'll do that on way home. Couple left yard. Baby was here in the game. Oh, I was alright. Right, here we, here we go. Right, here we go. Uh, Eddie Hearn saying he's guaranteed forty million dollars. Forty million, and uh, he's supposed to have said that that the forty million that's coming in will pay Ruiz and Joshua their flat fees. So that leaves the international TV money, all the pay-per-view money, and the commercial money and the gate. That'll be whacked up between Eddie Hearn and, and Sky, no doubt. So, but the site fee, that looks to me like it's going to pay the fighters. So the undercard will be paid from the gate. No, probably the commercial stuff. The gate and everything else and the pay-per-view, the international TV money. All they've got to do for that is take their own cuts, Sky and Eddie, and, and pay undercard. I think that's brilliant. And if it's your own money and you're putting that undercard on, you're going to pay as little as possible, aren't you? Or you're going to put on what you think you can get away with. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Pay-per-view, international TV money, gate, commercial, and then all merchandise and all that, isn't there? But you know, you've got food and beverage and flights out there and that, and they're going to be back and forward, back and forward over the next four months, and that's going to add to Eddie Hearn's workload. And Eddie Hearn, let me tell you this, we all, we all have a dig at Eddie and all that. He's still only a bit of a kid, isn't he? He's just turned 40. He is the hardest working guy that I've ever seen. So is his dad. They're hard working lads, them. I've had emails off them at 9 o'clock at night, let me tell you. They're hard working lads. They, they must not know what time zone they're in half the time, especially Eddie. They're hard working. Frank Smith's an hard working lad. They'll not be tossing it off at Matchroom. I've heard rumours of it years and that they're really, really an hard working lot. If you want it, you've got to go out and get it. It's like me. I thought, if I want it, I've got to go out and take it. I've got to be up early. I've got to be up earlier than the next man. If I want to treat myself to a couple of t-shirts, Lacoste t-shirts this weekend, I've got to think to myself, right, I'm going to need an extra 160 quid this week where I've got to pull it from somewhere. You know what I mean? So, I'll do that video on the way home. Uh, do train on. Oh, nothing will change until we're... Yeah, I'll do. I'll, I'll mention all this on my own. So, all right then. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Uh, hit the like button, and for those of you who haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button, and you will get your porky fix straight to your phone whenever our videos are uploaded. Uh, and don't forget to uh, follow me on Twitter as well if you don't. It's at Corner Porky on Twitter. And we're on Facebook as well, but I don't deal with that. Uh, Facebook is just Porky's Corner Facebook. I want on Instagram, but I couldn't work out buttons, a bit like we Facebook. So, uh, alright, so keep sporting boxing. And all I can say to you all is, let's hope it's 20 quid this fight, if it does come on Sky. If, sorry, if it does happen in Saudi, let's hope it's 20 quid. And then they don't put it up to 25, because I think that would be in bad taste if they put it up to 25. I really, really would. I think it'd be in bad taste. So, alright. So... Peace out, keep on trucking. Hey, what do you think? What do you think to me? Uh, I've got a uh, matching t shirt on and shoes today. What do you reckon? Orange loafers, eh? I look like a Teletubby walking down the street, don't I? So, peace out. Oh. I'll read the video in a bit, and that's all, folks.